Hello everybody, this is Dave's Deacon here, and we're doing something a bit different, as you can probably tell, with the uh, patented Ashens cam today, because I wanted to show you um, some books that I have collected. It's not a big collection, there's four books, it's, it's barely a collection, but they're really interesting books, to me at least. And I, I got these books, firstly because they deal with subjects that happen in movies, and I like to do research and that stuff, but... Uh, as if I can gesticulate with my hands. Um, they're actually really interesting books in themselves and I'll have a lot of history behind them. So I thought I might as well show you and see what you think. Hopefully it'll be an interesting video. I don't know. Um, so let's start with the first book. Okay, here we go. This is the first book, possibly the most well-known of the four books I have. But this is The Book of the Law. Liba al vel legis. Um, uh, some people are probably saying, oh, I know that one. Uh, and other people, not so much. Uh, nothing on the back. Um, the Book of the Law is a almost like a, a Bible for uh, the religion. I can't recall the religion, uh, but if I might. See, uh, the Book of the Law was a with a facsimile of the, the manuscript. This is a book of the book, strangely. And yeah, it says right there, Good old Alistair Crowley. Yes, this this is the book which he wrote uh, under orders from a celestial being um, while he was in the desert, possibly off his tits. Um, and yeah, it's a it's a, it basically it's his Bible. Um, I'm t I'm having to look. Sorry, I don't want to go out of uh, focus. But this is the book he wrote for his um, religion. And if you don't know who Alistair Crowley is, I'll put a picture up here. As you can tell, he's a bit of a British geezer. Not really the uh, image you come up with when you think of Alistair Crowley, father of occultism. And this book basically goes through, see, it goes through all the different f f um, parts of what he written down. And if I'm honest, a lot of it is wank. <laughs> it's just absolute nonsense. And it's it's not that ah here we go yes uh, it's it's got a lot of Egyptian theme into it I I don't know the entire story um I'll probably I will write the name here of the religion he created Alistair Crowley himself is a very very interesting man he was a, I believe he was a spy for the, for for the UK and the the United States during the war uh, World War One I, I believe um but I could be wrong. And yeah, he's a very, very interesting but weird, weird man. And of course, he went mental. And yeah, this, this, it's an interesting book, but it's, it's definitely not. It's nothing special. You can buy this from Amazon. I did, and it's, it's not that great. To be perfectly honest, it doesn't go into enough detail for me. But it gives you a little bit of history. The yeah. The author called himself Awas. That's the one. Awas is the um, celestial being who contacted Mr. Crowley and taught him the ways of this... Well, I say religion. It's more of a philosophy in the way it goes through. Um, and, yeah, I, I'll go through a few pages and you can read it if you want. Just pause the video. Um, and, yeah, it, it talks about the universe and all this stuff. But, like I said, a lot of it is just rambling bollocks. So, yeah. Uh, if you're interested, I suggest you look up Alistair Crowley. He's a very interesting man. But that's the book of the law, and it's not particularly interesting for me. But, for research purposes, I enjoy it. On to the next book. Now, this next book is where we start to get a bit more interesting for me. Because this is The Lesser Key of Solomon. Le Megaton Clavicula Solomonis. Yes. Um, and this would be the Ring of Solomon right here. Um, and yes, this is, as it says, detailing the ceremonial art of commanding spirits, both good and evil, which it kind of does. But if I can pick a random page, wada, as you can see, it's got fabulous tattoo ideas, absolutely brilliant tattoo ideas. And I, I'm, I'm a big sucker for tattoos. But this, it basically... You have three different sections of this book. If I can get to the start. Right, here we go. 
of the art of Goetia. This is the first part of the book, and it details the 32 evil demons that King Solomon, because, you know, Solomon, it's about King Solomon. Um, it's about the 32, eh, 32, 72 demons that King Solomon banished into a, into a brass urn. And it details who they were. See, you have the first principal spirit is a king ruling in the east. By the way, uh, you'll, you'll see Y-E there. Never pronounce that ye, as in ye old. That is not a Y, it's known as a thorn. It's a T-H, so it's still pronounced the. Stop saying ye. Anyway, <laughs> uh, the first, yes, in the east, called Baal. And this is his symbol. And it, it'll go into how many legions they command and how many servants they have. And it gets fucking ridiculous, trust me. But this one's really interesting. Uh, maketh men goeth invisible. Maketh men go invisible, rather. He ruleth over 66 legions of inferior... I'm trying... I'm having to look at the viewfinder, I'm sorry. Um, legions of inferior spirits. He appeareth in the... What was that? Yeah, it does say that. He appeareth in diver... I'm guessing that's supposed to mean divers. Diverse, rather, not divers, as it says there. Diverse shapes, sometimes like a cat, sometimes like a toad, and sometimes like a man. This will be interesting for a later book as well. And sometimes in all these forms at once. He speaketh very... What's that? Horsely. Sorry. I'm having to look through the camera. I, d I deeply apologise. Um, this is his character with... Which is to be worse as a layman... Oh, God damn it! This is his character, which is to be worn as a layman before him who called him forth, or else he will not do you homage. Basically, you have to wear this symbol if you call this demon. Yeah, it's a bit weird. I don't know why you'd want to. And, and like I said, it goes into a lot of detail about these, and there are loads of them. And this is just the first part of the book. Um, and I'll get to one that I find very, very interesting and weird. Just give me one second. Oh, here we go. We have the different images. And you're, you're welcome to take screen grabs because these are fucking great tattoo ideas. I don't know if I'd ever get these as tattoos, but they're really interesting. And they explain all the different uh, ritual stuff. And it's it's all about the rituals. Very, very interesting. But one second and I'll, I will be right back with the correct demon i would like to talk about right here we go um this is the second part of the book the art thurigia i can't pronounce this goetia and basically it talks about spirits that are not evil and not good yeah and here you go and this is the the wheel that represents where all they lie in the different positions and all this stuff it's very interesting stuff but to give an example of one you have uh, oh, I had a, I had a good example one actually. Um, where is it? I'm trying to find it. Where is it? Oh yeah, it has the what they are, who they command, and the conjuration. You can actually summon them. I don't recommend it. Um, well, but here you go. This is where it gets insanely ridiculous. You got Demoriel is the great and mighty emperor of the north who hath 400 great dukes, 600 lesser dukes, with that many servants. Now, I've never had a servant, but I can probably tell you that's too fucking many. Why does he have that many servants? It's insane. <sighs> yes, Demoriel, you're a greedy fucker. But yes, <laughs> and it, it goes into detail like that, and that's just ludicrous. And some of the, the... The images vary in different kind of things. Some of them look kind of um, Catholic in a way. And others almost... Um, I mean, here are some of the dukes they command. And, and they have almost Aztec, some of them. It's very strange combination. And this is apparent... I mean, I... Sorry, I just hit my light there. Um, and I don't know how genuine this is. I mean, all of it is suspect, let's be honest. But from what they say... This is genuinely what King Solomon wrote about all these spirits. Um, and I'm neither going to say it's wrong nor right, because I don't know. And some of these get really intricate. Look at this. 
They're kind of cool. They kind of look like circuit boards in a way, which is very strange. They're like circuitry. Anyway, yeah, this is the, the, the Lesser Key of Solomon. And if you're really interested, and here, oh, here we go. And if you're really interested in, in like, uh, especially King Solomon, I know some people are, um, it talks about this stuff, which is, uh, these are the, the good, I suppose you could call them angels in a way. And they give you fantastic names, like Elekheim, I believe that's pronounced, Elekheim. And the angel thereof is called Vathmiel. They're really good, interesting names. So if you're writing a novel, uh, use this book for some Barakiel, who I believe is in the first prophecy as well. So yeah, very interesting stuff. And if, if we go further, here we go. This, oh, here we go. The, um, it tells you, you can actually work out which uh, you are most aligned with because you have the uh, zodiac, you have the, the natures, uh, as in fire, earth, air, water, blah, 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 blah. And there's the angel and all this. But this is actually where it gets a bit more professional. If I can get to the page, one second. <clears throat> here we go. Yeah, this, these are actual metal seals that you should create depending on what you want to summon and it's really interesting because it's all written in alchemy as in this uh, is one ounce or 28 i believe that says 28.35 grams and you've got different symbols so it's it's uh, it's all in alchemical writing which is really interesting so if we'll go for one random make this seal of that zero what's zero where does it say gold there you go when the sun entereth taurus i believe when after sorry it's gone out of focus then after when something see it's it's all in code which i like but it does genuinely instruct you in how to make these specific seals it's very interesting stuff i personally don't put any stock into it but if you do you always have this book so there you go that's the lesser key of solomon it's a, it's an interesting read and it's got all these it's got spells and all this bollocks that i don't really put any stock into but like i said if you do you might want to give it a look and it's it's pretty interesting stuff on to the next book now, this next book is quite possibly one of the more interesting ones I own. It's not the most interesting because it's there's one other that I really enjoy uh, reading the history of. But this one is very interesting. This is The Dictionnaire Infernal. Isn't that dramatic? Um, let me just center that. Yeah, this is The Dictionnaire Infernal, uh, the Infernal Dictionary, basically. Written in, what does it say? Uh, 18, what does that say? 1863 this was written in 1863 paris as it says right there and this is basically a almost like a copy um i, I can't remember where i got this from i want to say photocopied copy of the original book and it's basically made to look like the original book is it keeps reflecting on my light i apologize um, and this is this is how the book would have looked in 1863, which I really enjoyed. And it's very interesting. There's only one pretty big downside to this thing in that there is no known English translation that you can buy. You can download a English translation of this if you want. But I always like to have an actual book and you can't get it unless you want it in French. Yes, this is an entire... Like I said, it, as it says, it's a dictionary of everything occult at, known at the time of its writing. Everything. And I, I do mean everything that was known. It's deeply interesting. Unfortunately, like most dictionaries in another language, it's pretty hard to read. <sighs> but I will show you a few pages and try to interpret what it says. Because I know a little bit of French. So, yeah. I'll show you some more interesting aspects. Well, yes, here we go. Um, the most famous aspects of this book are the illustrations, specifically of the demons of hell. Yes. 
And as you can see here, this is an illustration of Baal, or Baal, or Baal. And as it said in the Lesser Key of Solomon, he has a cat and a human and a frog face. I, I can't remember if it said frog. But yeah, so this is actually, they're, they're corroborating each other, which I find really goddamn interesting. And as it says here, um, I can't read it. One second. It says, uh, Baal, demon, sit dans le grand grimoire en tête des puissance infernales. As it says, my French is awful. But it just goes into the big description. And if we go to where my, my tissue is. Here we go. Uh, go away. Um, as you can see here, we have another demon known as Behemoth. And again, I'm going to have to get close to actually read it. One second. And as it says here, uh, Behemoth, demon lord est stupid. So it is very, very French. And yeah, and that's another demon, obviously, who's just a bipedal elephant for some reason with a huge stomach. Okay. And we have another one who's just a grumpy old man who, um, what's that say? Belfagor. You have Belfagor, who um, the illustrations pretty much explain everything about them. And of course, you have Beelzebub, the Lord of Flies, taken quite literally there. And yeah, it goes into huge detail about everything known at the time. Uh, you, uh, see, there's another demon right there. Um, the, the illustrations are good. I don't just read it for the pictures. And I've, tr I've tried to translate a few things for myself. Um, oh, was that? Is that Inquisition? I can't tell. But, yeah. Deeply interesting book. Deeply, deeply interesting. And it, it talks about everything that was known at the time. Obviously now, not really applicable. But it's very interesting. And some of it, it's, some of it's quite, quite odd. Um, like in one section, I'm just going to flip through it while I talk about it. Um, in one section, it talks about card uh, cardomancy. Uh, in other words, telling the future with um, uh, tarot cards. And it just it has this brief description. It's like that big. Uh, where it says, cardistry is, it basically says, is complete bollocks. Don't believe it. It's nonsense. And then uh, later on, it talks about palmistry, as in reading the future through the palm of the hand, and says how absolutely accurate and believable it is. So, yeah. It also doesn't it doesn't help that the uh, I took the uh, cover off just to make it uh, does it say yeah dictionary and for now um, the the author of this um, started off as a skeptic and a few years after writing this he became a Catholic minister and rewrote it to be a bit more biased so thanks for that what, what was your name uh, Colin de Plancy, yeah, so thanks for that, Plancy. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's got a lot of interesting stuff. And like I said, you can find an English translation of it online. I'm not too sure how accurate it is, but if you are interested, especially in like the 1800s and the 1800s mentality towards um, spiritualism, occultism, demonology, all this stuff, it's a deeply interesting book. I, obviously, I can't read all of it, but for what I have read, I've been very interested. And, of course, you can just look at the pictures. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and, oh, there we have a... Is that is that right? Yeah, that's actually Carly. And I'm, I'm pretty sure we all know Carly. I won't say where she's from, because I'm not particularly sure. But, because I don't want to make myself look like an idiot. But that's Carly. Everyone knows who Carly is. Uh... And yeah, it, it, it talks about everything, not just demons. It talks about all the different, um, you know, cartomancy, palmistry, all this stuff, um, divination, ghosts, or everything. Like I said, it is a proper dictionary of the time of the occult and spirituality, spirituality which is vastly and deeply interesting to me and I will be using this I will definitely be using this for future reviews because I've got a few places where this actually comes up specifically so yes that is the Dictionnaire Infernal on to the last book okay here we go uh, this is the last book this is the one I recently got only a few days ago actually and it's 
and it's a very interesting book. It's a very awful book, uh, which I don't know, I'll go into why, but it's a very interesting, especially if you if you like the history of this. So here we go. And no, it hasn't been dredged up from the sea. Uh, this is the case it's in. And here we go. It has a quite <laughs> overly dramatic cover. But this is known as the Malleus Maleficarum. Is that right? Malleus Maleficarum, yes. Otherwise known as Hexenhammer in the German. Or the Hammer of Witchcraft. This book... Specifically, this book caused the deaths of many women during the time it was created. This is basically the book witch hunters used to execute witches. Not even a joke. If I can go into what it says. And it, it tells... Basically... It, let me just start from the beginning. It starts by basically saying... It states... God must exist, which is debatable. But it states that God must exist, therefore Satan exists, therefore witches must exist because they are the servants of Satan. That's the logic they went on. <sighs> anyway, and I used logic quite wrongly. Um, and it's... Uh, got past the introduction. Here we go, the first part. Here we go. Treating of the three necessary... Concomitants, I've never heard of that word, of witchcraft, which are the devil, a witch, and the permission of Almighty God. Yes, it's it's quite dramatic, but it's it's no joke. So you even have even have little pictures, yeah, um, of the several methods by which devils through witches entice and allure the innocent to the increase of the horrid craft and company. Yes, and it goes into what witches are, what witches do, of the way whereby a formal pact with evil is made. I'm pretty sure this is all kind of bollocks, but never mind. And it then goes into how you prosecute, torture, and execute them. It's quite a horrible textbook. Many people have died because of this book. Um, how are they transported from place to place? Uh, a horse... I think you'll find. Um, and it's... It, I find it deeply interesting. But I, I don't like it. It's, it's, it's a very evil book. It was created for very evil intentions. Here followeth the way whereby witches copulate with those devils known as incubi. Yeah, it goes a lot into incubi and succubi. Um, was that? Chapter, chapter 11 of the method by which they can inflict every sort of infirmity generally ills of the graver kind so essentially if you're sick which it even uh, i wonder if i can find the, uh, the 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 other chapter yeah the three ways in which men and not women may be discovered to be addicted to witchcraft divided into three heads and first of the witchcraft of archers no idea what the hell that's talking about unless it's jeffrey archer then he is a devil <clears throat> anyway, uh, I'm trying to find the, the right chapter. One second. Yeah, here you go. Chapter, what is that? Seven? Yeah. Um, how, as it were, they deprive man of his virile member. Yes, so erectile dysfunction, it's a witch. <laughs> it's, it's absolute nonsense. And, but it's very interesting, honestly, because people did take this very seriously. Uh, oh, I've already read that one. Then, this is where it gets really grim, near the end. Uh, remedies prescribed for those who are bewitched by being inflamed with inordinate love or extraordinary hatred. Okay, that's very vague. Uh, remedies prescribed for those who, by prestidigitory art have lost their virile members. They're quite obsessed with the virile members, aren't they? Or have seemingly been transformed into the shape of beasts. Yeah, and it, it goes on like this. Uh, like one aspect, it says that if you're interrogating a woman who is suspected to be a witch, if she doesn't cry, then she's automatically a witch. 
that's the level of lunacy that is in this book. And the third part is where it goes into the methods of torture and execution, which is why it's so short, because there's not much to do after the whole execution. So yeah, this is the Hammer of Witchcraft, Malleus Maleficarum. One of the more evil books ever created. It's a very strange thing about this book. It's an interesting thing to read, and it's an interesting thing to look at the history of, because people truly believe this. Um, and it's, it's very strange. But I... Read it for historical purposes and research purposes, which again, this this one specifically will come up later. I can pretty much guarantee it. Yes, Hexenhammer. I'll be reading this probably a lot more thoroughly just to go through it and probably not sleep for quite a while because it's, oh, some of it's quite awful. So yeah, those are the four books of occultism, spirituality, and all that crazy stuff that I have accrued over the few months. Um, I'll probably have more. Um, if I do get more, I will probably make another video if people like this, because this is really interesting. Um, it was an arse to set up the camera and everything, but never mind. It was fun, and I hope you enjoyed this video about all these books. Let me just put them up here. So there you go. The Lesser Key of Solomon, the Book of the Law, the Dictionnaire Infernal, and the Hammer of Witchcraft. I hope you found this video interesting, entertaining, I don't know. Um, if you did like this video, please click the like button and subscribe if you have yet to do so. They really do help a lot. And yeah, if I get any more of these books, I might do another one of these. So until then, uh, see you in whatever next video I make. Bye!